In this video, I'm gonna show you how to change the ignition coil on your lawnmower and talk about some things that would be symptoms for needing to change this. Now, a little reference here, this process is going to be similar on just about all riding lawn tractors. Now, what I'm working on here today is a John Deere X320. This is going to have the Kawasaki FH661V engine. So this is going to be a two cylinder engine. So we are going to have two ignition coils. Now, the main goal here to get to the ignition coil is to get the plastic cover off of your engine. So first thing that we're going to do is we're going to remove the air filter. So on this model, it's as simple as removing your two screw downs here get that air filter cover off. And then once we have the cover off on this model, we now have freed up the actual cover here. Now on some models of these mowers, you will have to go ahead and remove the air filter as that will create a full housing onto this plastic cover. But on this model here, we only have to remove the cover. That way it is separate here from the rest of the actual engine housing cover. Now, the next step in this process is getting anything free from the side of the engine that is bolted here to the cover. So for instance, on this model, we are going to have to remove our fuel pump. Also, we want to go ahead and undo our wiring harness here to our lights because that is going to be connected to our fuel pump as well. Then we'll see also that one of our bolts that goes into our cover right here has our fuel line in it. So we're going to get that freed up and then we can loosen all of our bolts around the cover. So first we'll go ahead and remove our wiring harness here. Simply pull that up to free that. Then we're going to get our bracket off that's connected to our fuel pump. This is going to be a 10 millimeter bolt here. We're just simply going to remove that. And once we get that out, our fuel pump has one more over here on the front side. Now, a lot of times these fuel pump brackets are going to have the two different bolts on them. So just make sure that you're not missing one. All right, so we've got that loose there. Then once we get everything else loose, we can pull this out. Now, before we go any further, the next thing that we want to do is we want to go ahead and take off the ignition coil that's going into the plug here. So for instance, if we were changing our left hand plug, we would pull that off. Now, some of the times why we're having to change this is because our actual plug in here pulled out of the wire. So if we don't wanna splice this back on with a new plug in, it's just as easy to go ahead and change the whole coil, but go ahead and remove that. And the next step is we want to go ahead and remove our negative battery terminal, just so we don't happen to have anything spark while we're working on the machine. All right, so now we have our battery cable undone over here. We're still working over here on the right-hand side. Next, we have this clip here. It's just a bend up. We're gonna get this out so that our fuel hose is free, and then we can start to pull out on our fuel pump. And we can just hang this off over to the side where it is out of the way. Now, we are going to start loosening up our bolts here on our cover. We actually don't have to remove these bolts that are on the cover itself all the way as you see that they are notched here where this cover will pull up and off without fully removing them. So it's actually recommended that you don't just so nothing gets out of sorts there. So we are going to leave these in just a little bit, but you are going to have multiples of these bolts around the back of the engine. So for instance, we have another one right here and each mower is going to be different on how many of these that they have. So you just wanna make sure that anywhere you see one of these bolts going into the plastic or with plastic around it, that we are getting that loosened up so that we can remove this cover. Now over here on the left-hand side, we are going to have two more on this particular engine. One that's right here on our cables. These are gonna be our throttle and choke cables that go up to the carburetor. Make sure that that's good and loose. And then we're gonna have one here on the back side of our oil fill dipstick here, that is going to actually loosen the dipstick from the cover. Now we've gotten all of our bolts loose. Next thing that we need to do is work on our screen up here on top. So we have to remove this screen to be able to get the cover off. Once again, this is going to be a 10 millimeter. We are just going to break these loose. Once 
we have these loose, we can take off that top screen. When we're doing that, we're also going to have this washer here that is all put together. We wanna make sure and grab that, not lose that, set it with our screen and set that to the side. Now, once we have everything loose, we can start to work this cover up and off really easy, just like that. And what we're looking for here is going to be this piece right here that is next to our flywheel. Now, how this works is that this ignition coil is a magnet. So it magnetizes, makes a connection magnetizing with this flywheel. And as it turns, as the flywheel turns, it's creating electrical charge from those magnetic fields. So sometimes what can happen is, is that these simply can go bad. They can lose their magnetic field. Sometimes we have an issue here with this wire at the back, which is going to be our kill wire. And sometimes we just have lots of issues going on that could just cause these to go bad. But we can see that these have never changed. You can see all the oxid oxidation on these. And we're not right now having troubles with this mower, but we could early on in the future. So we're going to go ahead and get this changed out. Now, how to change this? First, we're going to remove our kill wire here just by simply pulling that off. Then we're gonna go back with our 10 millimeter socket and we're just gonna to start to remove these bolts. And we can simply pull off our old coil here and get ready to go on with our new one. All right, so now that we have this ignition coil off, it's gonna be a good time just to do a little further explaining. Right here on the flywheel, we're going to notice this piece here. This is going to be what passes by the ignition coil to create that magnetism. This is pushed out to where it is going to get very, very close and just almost rub the inner side of our ignition coil. Now, this ignition coil is going to have a set spot. So as we see, there's no adjustment here in our bolt holes. These are in place, this is solid. So there is not going to be any adjustment. Now, what you'll see on some models is that you have a slotted hole here and you have to actually adjust the gap between here and here. Now on this X320, we don't have that, but a good rule of thumb when doing this to make sure your gap is correct is to mount your ignition coil where it's going to be on the lawnmower. Then we are going to turn our flywheel and make it make connection with the magnet here. And as you can see, if I pull back, you can see that that magnetizes to the flywheel. So what we would want to do to make sure that that gap is correct is to put a piece of paper between the metal piece here and between our ignition coil. We want to fold that over to where it's the thickness of two pieces of paper, put that in there, tighten down our ignition coil, and then once we have it tightened down, we can remove the paper. That's going to leave just the tiniest bit of gap to make sure that there is no rubbing between our ignition coil and the flywheel, but that is going to gap that correctly. So if you have adjustable ones, make sure, get that piece of paper, fold it over in half where we have the thickness of two pieces of paper, put it between this piece here and our actual ignition coil. Make sure you have that gapped and then tighten everything down. So on this model, we do not have that. We're simply going to set our ignition coil down on top. Make sure to start in our two bolts in the hole. Now, once we get those pushed down on to the ignition coil, you'll notice here that we do have just a little bit of play in each side. So to be safe, we are going to take our piece of paper here, make sure that it is folded over in half. And we're gonna get this put down in between here, pull back, and then we're gonna rotate our metal piece here to where it is making contact with our ignition coil. Rotate this, keep our paper in place. Now, right there, we have felt that it has made magnetism right there onto the paper. You can see that if I pull back and let go, it goes ahead and goes forward. So right there is how we want to be gapped. So now from here, we are going to tighten down our ignition coil and we're going to pull out on our piece of paper. And we're just gonna go ahead and continue to rotate, make sure that we don't have resistance somewhere, which right there, we have just a little bit of resistance. So we are going to loosen up, rotate back out, get our paper back in, and rotate our flywheel back over, getting it in line. Once again, we'll tighten this down. We will pull out on our piece of paper and we'll go ahead and rotate, rotate, 
rotate until we get that magnet back by our coil. Make sure we're smooth. And we are smooth right there. And now we're good to go ahead and reassemble. So we are going to put our kill wire back on here just like so. Then we're gonna make sure and get our actual spark plug wire. We're just going to get it sat down. There will be a notch where this wire needs to rest. So we will get that down and into place. And then now we can go back on with our cover. We can get our screen put back on here. Go ahead and tighten up your bolts on the left-hand side here. We have two over here, one on our cables and one on our dipstick. And we'll get our hose clip back up and into place here. And we'll get our fuel pump set back up and into place. Get our two bolts back into our fuel pump bracket here. And we're going to get our wiring harness for our lights back up and above. Get our fuel hose clamped back down to keep it into place. And then last but not least, reach over and get our lights hooked back up. We're going to reach down here and put our spark plug cap on to the spark plug. And then now we can reconnect our battery. Pop back on our air filter cover. And then once that's done, we'll want to hop on, start the mower up, see how it sounds. Now, keep in mind that this is an older mower. A lot of things rattling around on this mower, but if you happen to have a lot of noise once you've done this, then probably what's going on is that your gap is not quite correct on your ignition coil. So this is where that paper is really gonna come into play. This is where you want to make sure that once you get that paper, in between the ignition coil and the flywheel where that magnet is, is that that is making just the ever so slight pass past that paper after it has taken magnetization from the ignition coil to the flywheel magnet. So some of the symptoms that we'll see whenever we need to change out our ignition coils. One is going to be that the mower will simply just crank and not start. Now this can be caused by a lot of different things. We could have fuel issues here. We could need a few new fuel hose, new fuel pump. The carburetor may need to be cleaned. We may need to make sure that our fuel solenoid is working there. But once we have eliminated all of those things, next is going to be looking at our ignition coils. Now, another thing could be is that we are going along riding our mower, cutting, and then all of a sudden the mower just cuts out and dies and it will not start back up. This could also be an ignition coil issue. Now, like I said, this can go back again to being a fuel issue too. But if we get all past the fuel issue, we've checked all our lines, we've checked our fuel pump, we have gone in and cleaned out our carburetor, then this is where we might want to look at the ignition coils. Now you can test your ignition coils. This is gonna take a multimeter to do this. You'll also need to get the technical manual for your specific engine, not necessarily for the lawnmower itself because the lawnmower could have multiple different engine types in it. So we need to go online or call our local dealership, see if we can get a technical manual or just the chart for the ignition coils, this will have a chart on what they need to test at with our multimeter. Most of the time, this is going to be done in ohms. It's going to give you a chart, show you the three points on the ignition coil, which is going to be the magnet that I showed you, the kill wire, and then also the plug wire that goes onto your spark plug. We're going to test these in multiple different spots, follow the chart, see if the ohms reading matches up to what's on the chart. If it does, then your ignition coil is good and we have a different issue. If it does not match up or it's not giving you the reading that it's supposed to have, then we know that we need to change out our ignition coils. So 
This can be a very easy change, as you just saw here, did it in just a few minutes, but sometimes diagnosing the problem is the bigger issue. So we need to make sure and take all of our steps if we're having those issues where the mower is running rough. Maybe it doesn't sound like it is firing correctly, which is sometimes you'll hear you know, it rev up and down. You'll see sometimes that it'll wanna sputter out and die. These are all things that can be directly related to those ignition coils. This is something that's not usually thought of. This is not usually a DIY type of project unless you are one of those that is just a DIYer and you're highly mechanically inclined, but this is something that can be done on your own. So in saying all that, I hope that this video helped you out. I hope that you liked this video. If you did, we just you'd hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Also guys, if you're needing any parts for your John Deere mower, maybe one of these ignition coils, make sure to go check us out at 247parts.com. And as always guys, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Hey guys, make sure to go buy your parts right here and subscribe right here.